Welcome! In this business finance lecture, we will be going over study problem 2-1 in page 47 from the 8th edition of our textbook. Here's a view of the problem. Let's start by highlighting some key ingredients of the problem. So, we are told that the 10-year treasury bond is currently yielding 4% nominal interest rate. And at the same time, we also have some information about a 10-year corporate bond which has a nominal interest rate of 6.8%. It is also given that the liquidity risk premium for that corporate bond is 0.4%. Given these facts, the question is asking for the, the corporate bond's default risk premium. We'll begin by uh, recalling the formula for nominal interest rate, obviously. So that formula applies to any given security, be it a 10-year treasury bond or corporate bond. Okay, so the nominal interest rate is equal to the real risk-free interest rate, basically the treasury bond interest rate, but in real terms, plus the inflation risk premium, plus the uh, default risk premium, plus the maturity premium and the liquidity premium. Now let's go ahead and apply this formula for these two securities. Let's start by applying this formula to the 10-year treasury bond. So for the 10-year uh, treasury bond, the application of this formula for to the 10-year treasury bond yields that the nominal interest, which is actually given, uh, for the 10-year treasury bond, that number, that figure is 4%. So that thing is equal to the real uh, risk-free uh, interest plus the inflation risk premium plus the default risk premium plus the maturity risk premium of, the, of this 10-year treasury bond. Because it's a 10-year, let me just represent it by putting the letter 10 there. And then plus the liquidity premium. Now, notice that all these numbers belong to that 10-year treasury bond. Um, let, in fact, because it is the, this security is issued by the U.S. Treasury Department, by assumption, we believe that the U.S. government will never default, and as such, the default risk premium and the liquidity premium vanishes, so they are both equal to zero. That significantly simplifies our formula, so the real risk-free interest rate plus the inflation risk premium plus the maturity premium for the 10-year corporate bond. So if you will, I can put a letter T to represent that it's for the uh, corporate bond, uh, for the treasury bond. That number is equal to 4%. So that's our first equation. Now we can go ahead and apply the same initial formula here to the 10-year corporate bond as well, right? So at the beginning, I mentioned that this formula applies to any security, corporate bond. When applied to the corporate bond, again, the um, nominal interest for the corporate bond would be equal to 6.8%, which is equal to the real risk-free interest rate, plus the inflation risk premium, plus the default risk premium, the maturity premium, again this is a 10-year uh, security, plus the liquidity premium. Now let's sit back and try to observe a couple of things. So first of all, um, the real interest mentioned here is the same as the real interest, real risk-free interest mentioned in the 10-year treasury bond. So also the inflation risk premium um, because inflation is related to the economy-wide concept and macroeconomic concept, these two figures are also equal. And finally, check this out. The maturity risk premium for the corporate bond and the treasury bond are also equal. Why would that be? Because both securities have a lifetime of 10 years. So as a result, this two are also equal. So that's amazing because we already know from our calculation uh, for the treasury bond that these three parameters, they add up to 4%. So now I can plug it, plug that into the uh, corporate, uh, uh, co corporate bond valuation. Um, 
the, in, the nominal interest rate calculation. So as such, so I'm basically replacing these three terms, uh, the, uh, the real risk-free interest rate, the inflation risk premium, and the maturity risk premium with the number 4%. Now, I still have two more variables. I should be careful. I still have to figure the default risk premium. But guess what? The liquidity premium is provided in the problem. It's 0.4% for that company. So 0.4% it is. And we are pretty much done. So the rest of the problem is just making some algebraic calculations. And sure enough, I can move the 4% and the 0.4% to the left-hand side of our equation. So 6.8% minus 4% minus 0.4%. I believe that figure would be 2.4%. Uh, yes, that should be right. So 2.4%. And that's our default risk premium this is the result that we were after so that should be the end of our solution hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned